Russia delegates and uh, uh, my fellow speakers. Uh, so uh, uh, my name is B. Chandrasekhar. I am from Catalyst Biotechnologies, Delhi. Uh, so the, I will be speaking about our uh, uh, experiences regarding uh, controlling odor problem in the craft paper industry uh, using enzymatic routes uh, and using effective and innovative uh, monitoring solutions um, uh, to measure the odor level uh, during the treatment. Uh, so, as we all know, craft uh, mill is a uh, uh, craft paper is a very commonly used packaging material. Uh, it need, needs no introduction. It's a, uh, it has various properties due to which it is a very uh, suitable packaging material. Uh, uh, but uh, very often, the craft paper have obnoxious odor, uh, which can have several uh, consequences. Uh, often related to consumer dissatisfaction and uh, also financial implications. So, uh, so many craft paper mills, they require solutions, more, more effective solutions to control the odor uh, to produce very good quality uh, craft paper. So uh, there are many, many reasons for odor. Uh, odor can be due to the raw materials or due to the process involved in the manufacturing. Uh, the raw material itself, uh, because uh, many of the craft paper uh, mills, they, they use uh, unbleached recycled waste paper as a raw material, so that may carry some of the uh, odor. There are some inherent odor in the raw material itself. Uh, and uh, also, uh, most of them, they uh, use a closed circuit uh, uh, water system. That means they recycle the same water again and again uh, for over a period of time, for several months throughout the year. So uh, because of this, there is uh, some, uh, because of the stagnancy and other things, uh, the anaerobic conditions are developed in the water, in the tanks and wherever the water is present, uh, which leads to odor generation in the form of uh, H2S, ammonia, and alcohols, and volatile acids. So uh, this, this, during prolonged recirculation, uh, the organic load increases, uh, which, which uh, uh, encourages more growth of bacteria and hence more odor in the, in the paper. So what could be the solutions? Uh, the most obvious solution would be to uh, treat the wastewater before using it for the process. Uh, 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 the most effective solution uh, would reduce uh, the COD, BOD to the minimum levels and which will uh, uh, r reduce the growth rate of bacteria in the treated water because of lesser nutrient available to the bacteria and uh, due to which the odor level in the water would be uh, reduced to a, to a significant extent. Uh, in the absence of any effective wastewater treatment systems, we can use antimicrobials and chemicals to control the growth of microbes, to control the accumulation of odorous compounds to reduce the odor level uh, used for the paper, odor level in the for water, which is used for the paper paper making. So this is what our approach. We used uh, enzyme-based antimicrobials and chemicals, and uh, we saw the effect, uh, what happens to the odor, odor levels. Uh, so odor monitoring is another aspect. Uh, during treatment, uh, there are often lack of simple and easy to use assessment methods uh, because human nose has several limitations. Uh, often, uh, as I have listed down, there are five uh, limitations uh, faced by a human nose. There often confusion is there, subjectiveness is there, and then uh, at the end there is dis disagreement uh, as to like whether the odor level have really reduced or not. How do we measure odor? Uh, so there may be errors when we, uh, you know, sense the smell using human nose. And uh, that is why it makes us difficult to take, arrive at any decision uh, when we monitor the odor using only human nose. So here uh, we found the, the uh, we used a, a, a innovative technology which is known as uh, electronic nose, an artificial nose that mimics the uh, human olfaction system. Uh, it's 
so very precise and accurate, and it uses an array of uh, uh, chemical sensors uh, and pattern recognition module to, to generate signal patterns uh, which are uh, represented in the, in the form of odor intensities. So it's reported in terms of a numerical value, and it is more reproducible. Uh, the same kind of odor, same level of odor, will produce the same numerical value. So, uh, and the values are reported in accordance with the ASTM uh, E544 point intensity scale. That's a global, uh, globally accepted uh, standard for odor monitoring, for odor me measurement. And uh, this electronic nose was specifically de designed to monitor the odor intensity in pulp and paper mills. And uh, it can be used to measure the odor in wastewater, air, and pulp samples, paper samples. So the, uh, we uh, used this, we applied this, our treatment in a, uh, in a craft paper mill, twin wire craft paper mill based in South India. And uh, uh, it manufactures craft paper using recycled waste paper. Uh, it is operated throughout the year using recycled waste paper. And uh, so they face the problem uh, in the final product as well as in the surroundings due to the high odor level. Uh, so the treated water is recirculated from, from to the pulping and uh, the pulp dilution for the paper manufacturer. Of course, the treatment is not very effective, so there is odor, high level of odor even after the treatment process. So uh, we used a combination of uh, various enzymatic antimicrobials and H2S removal chemicals for this study. And uh, back to safe P and NZ Treat Pro are the antimicrobial co combinations uh, which were developed in our lab using uh, uh, the, by testing these combinations against the same microbial flora isolated from the uh, craft paper mill wastewater. And uh, sulfur treat P and R, these are based on uh, oxidizing agents and inhibitors, uh, specific inhibitors for the sulfate-reducing bacteria to prevent H2S formation by sulfur-reducing bacteria. So this shows the schematic, uh, simple schematic, the dosing, the dosing locations, points. Uh, it's a recirculating system, so at different points we are dosing different uh, antimicrobials and uh, the other chemical sulfur treat R and it's based on the total volume present in the water. And the monitoring, we did, we have been doing this uh, study for more than three months now, and uh, during this period we are m monitoring the total bacterial count, the lactic acid bacteria, the microbiological studies, and then the COD, H2S, ammonia in the water, and the volatile acids, other organic acids, alcohols, aldehydes, acetates, everything using HPLC and gas chromatography. And then uh, odor was uh, monitored during this period using the electronic nose uh, instrument. And uh, these are the results. Uh, the effect on the microbial load uh, before the treatment was started on day zero, uh, we can see uh, very high CFU count, uh, the TBC and TLBC counts were very high, uh, to the of the order of 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 8. Uh, but do, uh, after the application of our antimicrobial uh, solutions, uh, within 15 or 20 days, we got more than 90, 95 percent reduction. And uh, after that, the levels have been maintained at around 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 4 CFU per ml, which is very good reduction in the bacterial growth. Similarly, uh, if we correlate with the H2S ammonia and COD levels, uh, they, we can see significant drop in the uh, sulfides and the ammonia and the COD uh, during the entire period. So the treatment inhibited the bacterial growth. That is why these uh, uh, biogenic ammonia and sulfide accumulation was also reduced. Uh, so there was also a considerable drop in COD, which could be because of the oxidizing agent, the oxidation effect, which we are giving. And so there was a considerable drop, uh, around 20, 30% drop in the COD. Uh, one uh, significant drop in acetic acid, then lactic acid, especially lactic acid, if you see uh, earlier, the, the, these orange bars, 
uh, were it, it, it represents the lactic acid concentration. It was more than 10,000 or 12,000, even up to 15,000 ppm in the water before treatment, and which gradually, uh, not gradually, we can say it drastically came down after 44th or 50th day, and after that, uh, it ranged only between 1,000 to 4,000 ppm, uh, which is uh, very significant. Uh, so other things like butanol, if you say butanol is also a byproduct of the microbial metabolism and it causes odor, uh, that also is slightly it is reducing. The, the blue, blue, blue graphs, the blue bars represent the butanol concentration which has reduced by the end of 88th or 88th day. <coughs> so the odor intensity, it is, uh, uh, we measured the odor at different locations, uh, like uh, the water samples, different backwater, the, the wire, the top layer, bottom layers, the treated water samples. Uh, so what we found is uh, the treated water and the other water samples, they had the very high odor. Uh, this is the odor intensity, the, y, the x, y axis, it shows the odor intensity at uh, 0 to 10 scale and uh, here uh, we can see uh, generally uh, in this odor intensity uh, more than two or three is considered to be very highly highly odorous uh, below two or three is considered to be uh, mild uh, you know less odorous so we can say anything above seven or eight is uh, very odorous uh, so this According, according to the ASTM standards. And very high intensity of odor was there in the treated water, which directly affects the paper because the treated water was used uh, for paper manufacturing. So over a period of days, we monitored the uh, treated water odor. Uh, we can see a very significant drop uh, in the 60 day period. You can see the initially the, the change in voltage uh, here uh, we are showing in, the, in terms of change in voltage, that is another parameter which can be used to monitor the odor. And uh, the x-axis, it shows the different sensors. So different sensors uh, have different change in voltage. Higher the change in voltage, higher is the odor level, which is exposed to the sensors. Simple. So, uh, and the cumulative of all this is represented in terms of odor intensity. So. Here we wanted to show the dif uh, different sensors, how they respond to different, uh, differently to the odor, the odor levels. And uh, during the course of the treatment, we saw a very good reduction in the odor intensity. Uh, so there was a linear fall overall uh, during the treatment, which gave a positive affirmation that the remediation technique that we used was very effective. Uh, so, <coughs> Uh, the, we can conclude that the treatment that we gave using Bactosafe, Enzitrate, and Sulfotrate uh, very effectively reduced the microbial load in the craft paper, uh, and the, as well as the other thing, other parameters like ammonia, NH, the ammonia, H2S, and CO, COD. And however, uh, we would like to suggest like uh, we should measure it more continuously. Uh, continuous measurement of the odor intensity is very important for more effective remediation because the overall industrial scenario in this type of in, uh, factories is very unpredictable or we can say capricious. Uh, so, and we are fine tuning this, uh, the treatment technology, the program, the formulations, and uh, also the uh, enos to achieve complete smell-free craft paper. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention. Uh, would like to have questions at the end, I think. Yeah, okay, thank you.